What's up YouTube, it's Jeffrey again. Today we're doing yet another creepypasta. And today we're doing My Little Pony Cupcakes. So let's get to it. Now this is really long, but I have to do it anyways. The air was warm, the sun was shining, and every pony in Ponyville was having a glorious day. The town square was bustling and crowded and busy ponies filled the streets. All the pony folks seemed to have somewhere to be, all except Rainbow Dash. Her place was in the sky. She tore freely through the air, speeding one way and the next, buzzing the treetops and racing the wind. The blue pegasus swooped over a schoolyard, much to the delight of the children, and then several hundred feet and dove down, streaking downward as fast as she could. Seconds before hitting the ground, her wings flew open and she pulled up back into the clear blue. Rainbow fell alive. Suddenly, Dash remembered that she had somewhere to be. She was supposed to meet up with Pinkie Pie in five minutes. Dash had gotten so caught up in her exercises that she nearly forgotten that Pinkie had asked her to meet her in Sugar Cube Corner at 3. Pinkie had asked or said why or what they were doing, but Dash knew that with Pinkie Pie it could be anything. Dash wasn't sure if she really wanted to go, though she was so engaged with the stunts that she thought about blowing Pinkie off just to continue flying. But Dash's conscience got the better of her. She knew that it would hurt Pinkie's feelings after all. Pinky had said it was going to be something special just for the two of them. Dash considered it and thought, why not? What did she have to lose? Heck, it might be more than pranking. Pinky might have found a bunch more fun stuff to pull on people, or ponies in this case. And they still had so much fun the last time, Dash kicked into overdrive to make up for lost time and sped to the appointment. When she opened into the store, she was immediately greeted by her host, who was bouncing in excitement. Yay, you're here! I've been waiting for you all day, said the jumping pony. Sorry if I'm a little late, Pinky. I was doing my afternoon exercises and lost track of time, Dash apologized. Pinky giggled and responded in a gleefully reassuring tone, Oh, that's okay, you're here now. What's a few more minutes? I've been so excited thinking about all the fun stuff we're gonna do. I haven't stopped bouncing since I woke up. I mean, oh, I almost forgot to breathe. I've been so happy. Dash gave a slightly uncomfortable laugh. She had always appreciated Pinkie Pie's friendly, outgoing way of life, but Pinkie's overabundant enthusiasm almost creeped her out. Dash maintained a polite expression, however. If Pinkie was as worked up, whatever she had planned must be good. So, you ready to get started, Rainbow Dash? I got everything all ready, the pink pony said. Rainbow Dash psyched herself up. You betcha, Pinky. So, what do you have planned? Are we gonna prank someone? I got a couple of good ones I was thinking about. Or maybe you got some stunts you think I should try. Or perhaps making cupcakes, Pinky happily announced. Baking? Dash was disappointed. Pinky, you know I'm not good at baking. Remember last time? Oh, that's not a problem at all. I just need your help making them. I'll be doing most of the work, Pinky explained. Dash thought about it for a second. Well, alright, I guess that's okay. What exactly do you need me to do? That's the spirit. Here you go. Pinky handed Rainbow Dash a cupcake. Rainbow Dash was puzzled. I thought I was helping you bake. You will be. I made this one just for you just before you got here. So this is like taste testing or something? Sort of, Pinky said. Dash shrugged and popped the pastry in her mouth. She chewed a bit and swallowed. Not bad. Okay, now what? Dash asks. Now, Pinky informed her, you take a nap. Puzzled, Rainbow Dash opened her mouth but felt instantly lightheaded. A wave of dizziness washed over her, the world spun, and seconds later she collapsed to the floor. When, when Dash regained consciousness, she found herself in a dark room. She tried to shake her head but found that a taut leather strap held it firmly in place. She struggled to move, but braces around her chest and limbs glued her to a rack formed from the series of sturdy planks, with spread legs and arms wide open and apart. Dash's wings were the only part of her not tied down, as they fluttered frantically while she struggled to escape. As he tried, Pinky jumps suddenly into the line of her sight. Goody, you're awake! Now we can get started! Pinky stayed gleefully. She bounded into the darkness and quickly reappeared pushing a small car covered with cloth. Pinky, what's going on? I can't move, Dash said urgently. 
Well, duh, that's because you're tied down, said Pinky. That's why you can't move. I didn't think you need to be told that. But why? What's happening? I thought you said I was going to help make cupcakes. You are helping. You see, I ran out of this special ingredient and I need you to get more. Special ingredient? Dash was now breathing heavily and started to panic. What special ingredient? Pinkie Pie giggled and responded, You silly. Dash's eyes widened and her face contorted in fear. Then she started to laugh and said in a voice boring with hysteria, Oh wow, you really got me there, Pinkie Pie. I mean, tricking me into thinking I'm going to be made into a cupcake? I gotta tell you, this is the best prank yet. You win. You're the best. Pinkie only giggled more. Oh, thanks, Dash, but I haven't done anything like pranks today, so I can't accept your praise. Dash struggled again. Pinky, come on, this isn't funny. Then why are you laughing? Before Dash could answer, Pinky grabbed the cloth and wiped and whipped off the cart. On the cart was a tray containing various sharp medical tools and knives, carefully organized and wickedly sharp, as well as a large medical bag. Dash was now in full panic mode. She was starting to hyperventilate. Her mind raced as she tried to reason with the pink pony. You can't do this, Pinky. I'm your friend. I know you are, and that's why I'm so happy that I've got you here. We get to share your last moments together, just you and me. But the other ponies will wonder where I am, and when the clouds pile up, they'll come looking for me, and then you'll get find out. Rainbow Dash cried in desperation. Oh, Dash, said Pinky. Don't worry, there are plenty of Pegasus ponies to take care of a few clouds. And besides that, no one will find out. I mean, how long do you think I've been doing this? And with that ominous statement, the light suddenly came to life and revealed the rest of the room. Oh no. Rainbow Dash reeled in horror as the image presented to her. The room was decorated with a typical but twisted Pinkie Pie flare. Colorful streamers of dried entrails fluttered around on the ceiling. Brightly painted skulls of all sizes were attached to the walls and organs done in pastels filled with helium were tied to the back of the chairs. The tables and chairs were made of bones in the preserved flesh of past ponies. Rainbow Dash cringed upon seeing the centerpiece of the table nearest to her. The heads of four foals, their eyes closed as they were, if they were sleeping, were wearing their party hats made from their own skin. With a thrill of terror, Rainbow Dash recognized one of them as Apple Bloom's classmate Twist. Dash's eyes darted back and forth and then fell upon a patchwork banner hanging from the rafters, made from several tan pony hides. The words Life is a Party were scrawled in it on, in blood red. Dash's attention was brought back by a party horn unfurling and tickling her nose. She guessed that Pinky who was standing right in front of her. The party pony was wearing a dress quilted from dried skin and emblazoned with key marks. On her back fluttered six pegasus wings of all different colors. As the earth pony skipped in excitement, her necklace of severed unicorn horns clacked together loudly. Like it, Pinky asked? I'm here myself. Desperately, Rainbow pleaded with this smiling pony before her. Pinky, please, I'm sorry if I did anything to you. I didn't mean it. Please, let me go. I promise I won't tell anyone. Oh, Dash, you didn't do anything. It's just that your number came up, and, well, I don't make rules. We can't turn back now. Rainbow Dash was tearing up. How could this be happening? Oh, don't be sad, Dash, said Pinky. Look, this will cheer you up. I brought you a friend. Seemingly out of nowhere, Pinky produced a brightly painted blue and yellow skull. It was about pony size, but had a very defined feature, a beak. Rainbow Dash gaped in shock. Is, is, is that, is that? Hey Dash, let's hang together. These ponies are the most dweebs, 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 Pinky mimicked. I caught her right before she left town. Remember when I left the party for about 20 minutes? That wasn't enough time to play with her, of course. I had to wait till after the party to do that. But boy, am I glad I did. It was worth it for the flavor alone. Griffins taste like two animals at once. It's amazing. 
I know she didn't have a number like everyone else in Ponyville, but when I was going to get another chance to try Griffin, I probably should have asked where she came from and so I could get out more. But I forgot. I'll tell you what though, she was quite the fighter. She lasted a long time too, which was a lot of fun for me. I got the chance to play with someone other than a pony and try new things. It's too bad she had such a meany mouth. She said so much bad stuff, I just had to take her tongue out. You know, bad language makes for bad feelings, Rainbow Dash. Dash didn't have anything to say. She just sobbed and wreathed in her tight bonds. Well, said Pinky with an air of finale, that's enough reminiscing. It's time to begin. Putting down Gilda's skull, the pink pony gripped the scalpel in the, in the cleft of her hoof and walked over to Rainbow's right flank. Without any flare, Pinky placed the blade an inch above Rainbow's kitty mark and began to circular cut around it. Ra Rainbow Dash screamed in pain and tried desperately to pull away, but the braces held her still. Finishing the incision, Pinky grabbed a curved skinning knife from the tray, screwing up her face in concentration. She worked it under Rainbow's skin and, and sliced the hide away from the muscle. Dash ground her teeth as she tearfully watched the flesh peel off. Pinky then moved to the other side and repeated the process on Dash's left flank. When she had finished, Pinky held up both key marks in front of her friend and started waving them like pom-poms. Dash just whimpered. Her thighs burned like nothing she had felt before. Placing the rigged the ragged patches of skin down, Pinky selected a large butcher's knife and walked behind the blue pegasus. Hope you don't mind. I think I'm going to wing it now. Pinky laughed. She grabbed Dash's left wing in her mouth and played with it for a few seconds, yanking it back so the sharp pain reignited the fire in Rainbow Dash's flanks. Then stretching the wing out, Pinky brought the blade down hard at the base. Instantly, Rainbow Dash screamed and thrashed her appendage. The movement threw Pinky's aim off. She tried to hit the mark again but missed and carved a huge slice in Rainbow Dash's back. Dash, you gotta stay still or I'll keep missing, scolded Pinkie Pie as her friend howled. Dash took another, P I meant Pinkie took another wag and hit her target. She swung again and again, blood sprayed into the air, but Pinky realized she wasn't getting anywhere. The blade was just wasn't going down to the bone. Hmm, I think I forgot to sharpen it. I'll try something else, stated Pinky matter-of-factly as she tossed the knife over her shoulder, embedding the blade in the table. Through the haze of pain and tears, Dash heard the sound of a metal box opening and closing. Got it, say Dash. Why do they call it a hacksaw? It doesn't hack. Hacking is what I was doing with a knife. This is a saw. I don't get it. Pinky placed the, the tool over the mangled flesh of the last attempt. Standing on her hind legs, she worked the saw back and forth with her front hooves. It sliced effortly, effortlessly through the bone and skin. The feeling of the jagged teeth grinding into her made Dash want to vomit. She watched numbly as her wing flew over her head and landed with a fluff on the table. Pinky moved to do the same with the next wing and started sawing. Dash didn't struggle this time. She gave up trying to fight and focused on choking back screams of agony and pain. Abruptly, the sawing paused. Pinky was only halfway done, the wing hanging off by a sliver. Hey Dash, Pinky piped up. Think fast. Suddenly, Pinky yanked the wing as hard as she could, the bones snapping, but the pony's skin held but tore away. The pole ripped away a long strip of flesh all the way down Rainbow's back to her rump. Biases of the unexpected trauma. Rainbow Dash loud, loud screen of a melody of pain filled the room. Unable to catch her breath, she blacked out. She then woke up with a gasp. As her vision swam into focus, she saw a very angry Pinkie Pie removing a large adrenaline eel from her chest. Stomping her hooves, she, the frustrated, frustrated Pinkie Pie lashed out at her helpless victim. Didn't, teach, didn't anyone teach you any manners? It's very rude to fall asleep when someone invites you over to spend time with them. How would you like it if I came over to your house and went to sleep? Oh, I'm sorry, Dash. You're so boring. I think I'll take a nap. You think I like always doing this myself? 
I told you how excited I got when I found out you were next. I was excited to have a friend to be here with me while I worked, but no, you gotta be inconsiderate. You know, I thought you were tough, but I thought you can handle anything. I had full stand up better than you. Do I have to baby you, huh? Is that how you want me to remember you, as a baby? As Pinky stopped to catch her breath, Dash blinked and sobbed softly. Her back was in agony, her sides were on fire, and then there was an intense pain in one of her legs. As she blinked again, she saw Pinky pop sun red in her mouth and started to chew it. Noticing Rainbow Dash's stare, she gulped down the morsel down. What? Pinky asked. Oh, this? She holds up another piece. Oh, while you were asleep, I got a little impatient and helped myself to a small sample. I got it from your leg. You're not bad, want to try some? Without waiting for a response, Pinky shoved the strip of raw meat into the revolted Pegasus pony's mouth. Dash gagged and immediately spit it out. Pinky frowned and picked up the chunk of flesh. If you didn't want it, you could have said no. She then contemplated, comp contemplated the discarded slime morsel, then gulped it up. It's not like you have any of my cupcakes before. Swallowing, Pinky turned her attention to a small can on a tray. She removed the lid, revealing that it was filled with rot red hot coal. Lying on top of the coal were several large nails. As the adrenaline filled her veins, Dash began to panic again. Picking up the can, Pinky walked over to Dash's left holding some tongs with her mouth. She carefully picked up the nail and positioned it at, this, at the seam between her victim's front left leg and hoof. She then grabs the hammer and then took careful aim. No, Pinky Dashman, no, no! The hammer came down and the nail punctured Dash's skin. The white hot burning was just too much. Dash screamed as she pulled and thrashed at the braces, causing her skin to rub and tear. Pinky tried to line up another nail, but couldn't find her aim, and not a frustrated grunt. When Pinky brought the hammer back to a wild swing, Dash bust out crying and begging, no, Please stop! Please! Please stop! Pinky rolled her eyes, pointing down the hammer and tongs. She walked back in front of her friend and stared pensively at the broken Pegasus. Gilda didn't even cry as much when she had a large a live parasite stuffed down her throat. Pinky thought for a minute about what to do next, then a sudden spark of inspiration. Rotating the wheel on the rack, Pinky laid Dash on her back, then moved to Dash's hind legs, bringing the can with her. Picking up her tools, Pinky drove a searing hot spike of metal directly into the bottom of Dash's hoof. As Dash yelled in pain, Pinky moved ahead and drove a second nail into the other hoof. Next, Pinky went back into the cart and located an enormous battery and controller, which she dragged over to where she was working. She tied copper wires between the terminals and the nails driven into Rainbow's hooves, then gave Dash a wink and flipped the switch. Electricity rocketed through Dash's body. The blue pegasus reacted immediately, her body seized, and her muscles snapped hot. Rainbow tried to escape her but failed. Her eyes rolled back and she let a deep throat strain cry. Pinky quickled goals and danced in place and then reached down and turned up the power. Dash convulsed uncontrollably and passed out again. After about five minutes, Pinky shut off the power. Wisps of steam rose from the singed fur around Rainbow's hooves. In the area, it reeked of cooked flesh and burnt enamel. Pinky rotated Dash upright again and tried to snap the drooling delirious pony back to attention. Rainbow Dash, wake up! Dash moaned and managed to give um, a, a, a modicum of weak acknowledgement. Pinky saw sight her handwork, then reached into the medicine bag and produced a large syringe. Alright, time for the last round. Dash focused bolerily on the needle, which Pinky took as a question as to what it was. This is a little something to take the pain away, Pinky informed Dash as she walked around who the victim's ruined back. Pinky flinched as, well not Pinky flinched, but Rainbow Dash flinched as Pinky jabbed the needle 
sticking to the lower part of the blue pony's spine. Moving in front of her front again, Pinky leaned down and elaborated, In a few minutes, you won't be able to feel anything below your rib cage. Then you'll be able to stay awake to watch the harvest. Rainbow started to cry again. P Pinky, she choked out. Yeah? I want to go home, Dash sobbed. Yeah, I could see why you do that, replied the party pony. Sometimes I just want to give up, to say I'm done with this mess and go to bed. But you know what? You can't shrug off your responsibilities. You gotta pull yourself up and meet the challenges head on. That's the only way you're gonna get ahead in life. Dash hung her head and cried. Minutes passed as the drug took effect. Eventually, Rainbow was completely numb from her chest to her, her flanks. At this point, Pinky approached with a scalpel, glancing at Rainbow Dash and smiling. She made a long horizontal cross across the Pegasus pony and then moved at Rainbow Dash's body. Pinky made a similar incision under the ribs. Finally, Pinky made a large vertical cut down Rainbow Dash's belly, connecting the first two. Look, I got my eye on you, Dash, Pinky giggled. The f she opened the flaps of skin. The sight of, of Rainbow Dash's own organs and the lack of feeling caused Rainbow Dash's breathing to intensify. Pinky grabbed, oh, sliced open Rainbow's abdominal sac and grabbed her large intestines. As she separated the organ from the rest of the digestive tract and pulled out of the new cavity, Pinky grew jovial, laughing as she gutted her friend. Pinky began to make jokes. Dash, growing tired and weaker from this new source of blood loss, tried to desperately shut out the macrobe comedy act. Look at me, I'm Rarity, Pinky laughed, slinging the intestinal tube around her neck, spraying blood in all directions. Isn't my new scarf so pretty? Reaching back inside, she sliced the smaller intestine off from the, from the bowels, squeezing out the excess excrement. Pinky filled the slimy organ through her teeth and dragged it back and forth. Dentists say you got floss every day, Dash. Dash was barely aware of what was going on anymore. The shock of her causing her to fade from the existence. Disappointed, Pinky dived back into the blue pony's guts, ramping up the routine. Don't go yet, Dash. Pinky started pulling out the rest of the organs, pausing with each removal. I know I can be a real pancreas, but you know I am just kidney with you. You really gotta liver it up. Boy, these jokes are getting bladder. Guess you gotta develop a stomach for them. Pinky placed the discarded parts into a bucket, keeping the last one for a bit longer. Oh, bagpipes, she said, placing the end of Rainbow Dash's esophagus in her mouth and the gut in her armpit. She squeezed, and a spur of acid hit her tongue. Ugh. Oh, hey, look, there's your cupcake, Dash. Dash didn't hear her tormentor. She had slipped from consciousness minutes ago. Pinkie Pie, not yet satisfied, hit Dash with another adrenaline shot. Rainbow Dash woke up for the last time. Her heart pounding, warm blood flowed out from the, in, the wound in her chest with great spurts. It wouldn't be long now. Pinkie brought Dash onto her back again and then straddled the blue pony's chest. Scalpel at the ready. You know what, Rainbow Dash? I'm really disappointed. I thought you would have lasted longer. I really wanted to spend more time with you before we got here, but I guess it's my fault. I shouldn't have taken it a little slower. Oh well, it was really nice knowing you, Dash. The blade slunk, sunk into the blue throat and worked its way up Rainbow's chin. Going back down, Pinky scalpel then circled Rainbow's neck. The last thing Rainbow Dash felt was her skin being cut away from her skull. As the metal of the blade scraping her teeth, then she was gone. Pinky stared into the mirror. She'd done a really good job, even keeping the eyelids. She winked, and Dash winked back. Pinky smiled, but still, she was sad that her friend was now gone. Rainbow only lasted like 50 minutes, not nearly as long as Pinky had wanted. She looked back at the cavender hanging in the center of the room, and the last of her friend's blood draining in the pan. Yep, no more Rainbow Dash. As she looked, Pinky cocked her head a bit. She began to take notice of the fact that there really wasn't much damage to the corpse. In fact, the pink pony mused, 
I think an idea exploded in her head. She was good at sewing, and she had all the pieces. All she had to do was put them back together. Yeah, she just had to get some stuffing and bingo. She had Rainbow Dash forever. In fact, thought Pinky, that's what she'd do. For all of her best friends, when their numbers came up, she was so excited, she skipped right over to the body with her skinner to get started. The cupcakes could wait. Pinkie Pie had a friend to make. Holy crap, that was long as hell. Now, I like the good aspects, like how, you know, life of the story is really important, but the only cliche I found in it, besides the time constraints, was the, oh, the access amount of gore. I mean, sure, I mean, it, like, Pinkie Pie butchered up Rainbow Dash pretty seriously, but I cannot believe that she did that. I mean, Rainbow Dash is my favorite pony, by the way. Now, I had another good thing about this is how viral this story became, because the credit to this story goes to Sergeant Sprinkles. And the last aspect I remember of this is that this creepypasta got a mega load of fans, like, from the Milo Pony fan base, as this story kind of scarred the fan base.